I want to draw your attention right quick like to Mark chapter 3 verse 24 through 27. What I'm feeling right now, I don't know just how I'm going to go with this. Amen. But I believe uh, this is the Word of God for this day. If you have it, just say amen. amen. And if a kingdom, this is Jesus speaking, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot, everybody say, stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. But hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except, notice this, there's one thing you got to do first. Except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for your spirit that we have felt thus far in this service, Lord. Thankful for this church, God. Thankful for the work that they're doing in this community today, Lord. Oh, God, I thank the Lord Jesus that you love us the way you love us, God. God. Nobody can love us like you do, Jesus. And God, we ask, Lord, that you anoint your word as it goes forth today. Use us for your glory and for your honor, God. And it's in the name of Jesus that we ask it. And everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today. I don't know how long I'll preach. It may not be that long. God may just want to work. I don't know. But I just want Him to have His way. I want to talk to you about binding the strong man. Binding the strong man. There is a spiritual concept in the Scripture that is so important to every believer. There is either a strong influence of sin in our lives that influences us to commit evil deeds, or there is a strong presence of God that influences us toward the righteousness of God right. and His Word. Amen? Amen. There's no in-between. Right. Amen? Amen? No in-between. You either for God or you're against God. Right. Amen? That's what he's saying here. Praise God. Paul speaks of two different laws that are at war in the life of every believer. He talks about the law of the flesh. How many dealt with the law of the flesh? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then he talks about the law of the Spirit. And I like to be in that law. I like to live in that law. But in order to get there, I've got to conquer the flesh. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And sometimes it is a war. Right. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said in the scripture that we read today, He said that a kingdom or a house that is divided or that is not unified will not survive. Yeah. It can't survive. Right. Amen. Amen. Every kingdom or house has a strong man that protects that house and all the contents thereof. Amen? Yeah. Our bodies, Paul said, are the temple of the house or the house of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. This body is the temple yeah. of the Holy Ghost. So who's the strong man in our house? Oh, come on. Who's the strong man in our house? It better be the Holy Ghost. Amen. And what makes the Holy Ghost strong? Prayer. Reading and studying the Word of God. Applying it to our lives. Being faithful to the house of God. Putting God first. Amen. We do that. The Holy Ghost is going to be strong. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Ghost to 
strong in my life every day. Because I never know what I'm going to come in contact with on a daily basis. Amen. And I've got to be prepared and be ready at whatever I face. Yes. Amen. Praise God. God's Spirit, the Bible says, will not live in an unclean house. Yeah. In other words, it ain't going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So we need to continuously keep our house clean. Right. Oh, come on. Yeah. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Every now and then we need to take some things out of our lives. Amen? Yes. We need to check our lives. We need to evaluate what's in our hearts, what's in our minds, what's in our spirits. Amen? And make sure that the Holy Ghost remains the strong man. Yeah. Because there's so many influences in our world today that can distract us from our course. It can distract us to keep us from praying that makes the Holy Ghost strong. It keeps us from reading the Word of God so the Holy Ghost cannot be as strong as it needs to be. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know how people survive without it. Amen. Some churches teach that it's good to have it, but it's not essential. I don't know how they do it. Amen. Well, let me tell you, they don't do it. They don't. <laughs> they don't abide by the law, as the brother talked today. Amen? Yeah. They don't live by the Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I can go in different ways, but I won't say where I'm at. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is our responsibility. Everybody that the seven chest says, it's my responsibility. Uh, it's to allow the Holy Ghost to protect the contents of God's righteousness in my life. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's my Responsibility. Yes. Nobody's got to make me pray. I know I gotta pray. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Nobody can make me read the word and study the word. I want to study the word. I want to live the word of God that the Holy Ghost can be dominant in my life. Yes. Amen. 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 It's got to be that way, Brother James. Yes. Amen. It can't be no other way. But I want to show you some things here. The prophets of old were the strong men of the nation of Israel. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. They were the backbone of the nation of Israel. <coughs> Hallelujah. When they were not permitted to speak, Israel became vulnerable to the heathen nations. Amen. As long as they spoke and people heard what they had to say and the kings bowed down to the word of God and submitted to the word of God, there was unity, there was victory, there was harmony in Israel. Yes. Amen. 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 But when they refused to listen to the prophets and they shut them up and they killed them, and they persecuted them, and they ran them out of Israel, hello, yes. then Israel became vulnerable because the strong man had been bound and was no longer able to protect the house. Come on, that's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. A good example of that is Samson. Samson was the strong man of Israel during the reign of the judges. I got it. Hallelujah. Everybody heard about Samson, right? Yeah. Right. Kids know a lot about Samson. Amen. They know he was a strong guy, right? He could do anything. He's like Superman. Hallelujah. There was so much that he could do, but there was so much he couldn't do. Yeah. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Samson demonstrated power against the Philistines so many times during his reign as a judge. Amen? Yeah. Samson was the strong man of Israel. Hello? As long as he kept the Nazarite vow, hello, he had power. There was nothing he could not accomplish when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Amen? He took away the gates of the city one night and put them up on a hill. Yeah. Bear them on his shoulders. What great strength. But you know, I, I like to think that Samson is just a little, little guy like us, you know. Just an ordinary fellow. He didn't have 
have no great power until he allowed the Holy Ghost to work. Right. Oh, come on. Yeah. Until he allowed the Spirit of God to come upon him and take control. Right. That, that's the only way we have power. That's the only way that we can work in the Spirit. That's the only way we can work in this world today and make a difference is when we allow the Holy Ghost to work through us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. But Samson had a problem with flesh. <laughs> I know I'm not talking to you about today. He's got a problem with flesh. I don't know. Hallelujah. Glorified. <laughs> We're living out glorified by the time. I remember one preacher said this. This lady walked up to him one night after a service. And said, oh, brother, so that ain't good to be in these glorified bodies. They had a good service, yeah. And he said, I don't know, sister. I'm not in mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't achieved that goal yet. But I'm striving to get there. Yeah. And the only way I'm going to get there is keep the strong man strong yeah. in my life. Good 
woman. Hallelujah. And I enjoyed her company. And so one thing led to another, and we started dating real, you know, real regularly. And one day I just, I said, hey, I want you to marry me. Amen. And she didn't wait. She said, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then as time went on and we started dating and we was engaged and everything, things started changing. Have y'all noticed that? Things right. started changing between me and her. And when I say changing, I'm talking about it all this close. And I began to see her differently than the first time I dated her. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, I think it was about three or four days before I asked her to marry me, I fasted three days. And I prayed those three days. I said, God, I need to know this is the right one. All right. That's good. Amen. I'm going to talk to some of you young folks here. Yeah. Come on. Talk to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I need to know if this is the right one. And after three days of fasting, while I was praying one day, God spoke to me and He said, I have set her apart as your bride. <laughs> so we married. We've been married for 43 years. Amen. 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 Not to say we haven't had problems because we have. Every marriage does. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because you're dealing with what? Flesh. Flesh. Flesh always gets in the way of everything, don't it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Samson loved women. But he didn't love them enough. He didn't love the ones that he should have loved. He didn't pray. He didn't seek the mind of God. He went after those <coughs> Philistine women. He went after those heathen women. Hello. Yeah. He didn't like those church women. All right. Oh, come on. Yeah. He didn't like the church girls because they didn't do some of the things that he wanted them to do. Yeah. Hello. Right. Praise God. So this problem that Samson had, it started binding up his relationship with God. Oh, come on, John. Yeah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Finally, Delilah said, Show me your heart. Show me what makes you so strong. Show me why you can do all the things that, that you do. And Samson said, well, if you do this, I'll be you like any other man. Three times he deceived, but he got closer to the secret. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And finally, she started crying. There's nothing that'll get a man like a woman crying. <laughs> I hate it when my wife starts crying. <laughs> it's over with, man. Ain't no more fighting. <laughs> Those tears start blowing. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. What did I say? <laughs> If you haven't been there yet, you will. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I'm weeping when she starts that crying, you know. It breaks down my barrier, my heat man. <laughs> and she can just about get anything she wants when she gets to that point. Oh, Amen? Yeah. <laughs> but every man is vulnerable to a woman in distress or to a woman crying. I'm telling you, you're not as strong as you think you are. Samson gave in. I tell you, there has never come a razor on my head since the day of my birth. Because I have been separated to be the strong man for the house of Israel. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And 
So she caused him to go to sleep in her lap. He should have never been there to start with. Right. right. And I've often said this. There were seven different vows for a Nazarite. And he broke all seven of them. Yeah. That's why he finds his place. He finds himself in the lap of a deceiver. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Am I talking to somebody today? Mm -hmm. There are seven things in the kingdom of God that you're going to make sure that you hold up. Yeah. That you're going to keep. That you're going to dedicate yourself to. And I probably can't name them all right now. But prayer and studying the Word of God, being faithful to the house of God, supporting the work of God, these are important parts of our life as Christians. Yes. And if we break them, then we become weak. Yeah. Right. Oh, come on. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't think you're weak? Miss a day of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Samson finally broke down and told her. She caused to go to sleep in her lap. This great mighty man that done all of these great exploits for Israel. The strong man, the judge of Israel, now finds himself with his hair cut. Hello? The enemy built on you, Samson. And he said, I'll, I'll just rise up and shake myself at the door and go out and slay him. But when he shook himself, come on somebody, yeah. he found out the power wasn't there. Yeah. He found out the anointing wasn't there. That's right. He became the weak man of the house of Israel. And when they bound him up and they plucked out his eyes, come on somebody, yeah. and they led him into the prison, Israel was vulnerable and became prey to every heathen nation. Yeah, yeah. Because they had no strong man. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We have got to understand this. The Bible says lay aside every sin. Huh? Every we ought to be laying aside every sin. But it said, and the weight. There are things in our lives that's not necessarily sins. But they cause a distraction. Yeah. Oh, come on. They yeah. cause a distraction in our focus upon Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. They cause a distraction with the church. Yeah. They cause a distraction with me reading and studying the Word of God and praying like I need to pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Amen. And when that happens... The Holy Ghost becomes weak. You know how people backslide? They allow things to come into their life just a little bit at a time. It's the little foxes that spoils the vine. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it just nibbles and nibbles and nibbles. Mm -hmm. Until finally it makes way for the, the bigger things. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You let down in one portion of your life of Christ, you're opening the door for all types of sins and iniquities. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We have got to stand fast in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. we got to stand fast Amen. at what our preacher is preaching and what he is telling us and how he's directing us. Come on! Amen. If we don't, we become prey to the enemy. The Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring mountain lion, devouring who he may. I don't plan on living. Yeah. Amen. You got a choice. You can backslide or you can stay strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a choice you will make. Yes. Every individual makes it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So Samson was bound. His eyes booked out. In prison. Amen. Amen. In Israel, they just pray. The enemy just comes in upon them. Read for yourself. And
and they devour. They destroy Israel. And Israel becomes prisoners to heathen nations. Not just one time. I can tell you many, many times. We must not allow sins in our lives that will bind the Holy Ghost. Amen. We cannot let our temple be corrupted with the things of this life. With the things of this world. With sin. Come on somebody. Yeah, that's right. We can't allow it. And the only way that I can keep it out is to pray. Yes. Amen. The only way I can keep it out is to submit myself to the Holy Ghost. And repent every day. Yeah. Oh come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. I got to keep the Holy Ghost strong. Amen. The Bible says that Satan has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yeah. And you know how he accomplishes that? Through sin. Amen. Yes. Through our flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Praise God. Paul was a great man of God. He wrote just about the whole New Testament. He wrote the instructions to the churches. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. But he said, when I go to good, do good, evil is present. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Right. And Paul said, I fail. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. And it causes me to do that which I would not do. In other words, I sin. And God, John understood that. That's why he put in John chapter 3, I believe it is, or chapter 2. Little children, I would she said, not but if you do sin. Yeah. When we're dealing with the flesh, there's going to be times that we are going to fail. But we don't have to stay in a fallen condition. Samson didn't have any eyes. But when he was brought into that great arena where there was more Philistines than ever before, they forgot. Strength was in his hair. Or they didn't know. Maybe she, maybe the lie didn't tell him. I don't know. His hair began to grow. And that great strength came back one more time. He asked that lad, he said, take me to the two pillars that hold up this place. Took him to the pillars. He repented. He said, God, let your power once more come upon me. And let me destroy these wicked Philistines, these uncircumcised heathens. And the power of God came back upon him. Whew. One more time, let me feel your spirit. And there are some people in this church right now that you pray that same prayer. Because you got so far away from God, you couldn't feel His presence. God wouldn't tell you that you're home. You say, God, let me feel your power just one more time. Let me feel your spirit just one more time. And God gave you another chance. Thank you, Lord. Don't throw it away. And you just never backslid. I know what it's like. I've been there. You just never backslid. Don't. You have the power within you of the Holy Ghost. And if you'll keep it strong, you won't backslide. You won't be straying away from the power of God. One more time, God. It's God allowed Samson to feel his power one more time. He took those two big old pillows and he pulled them apart. He said he slew more Philistines with his demise and his death than any other time in his life. Do you know what I'm thinking? I don't want to have to die to have great victory. Yeah. I want the flesh to die. Yeah. Yeah. But personally, I don't want to die. Because I can have victory in the Holy Ghost. Right, that's right. All I've got to do is 
to make sure that He's strong in my life. Don't allow things that you know will hinder your walk with God to come into your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Me and my wife has been sitting a couple of times or maybe maybe more than that in our lifetime and something will come on the TV and, and they'll start just cussing and stuff like that. And me and her both, we can't handle that. We're cutting it off. Hello? Yeah. <clears throat> when my children were growing up and we'd go get a movie, Jeff can vouch to this, or Pastor Palmer can vouch to this. We'd go get a movie. We say, we're going to watch it before we let you watch it. Amen. What are you doing, Brother Palmer? I'm protecting my house. I'm the strong man. Yeah. yeah. Hello? Yeah. yeah. They've heard us pray. They've seen us meditate before God. They, they saw us go to church. They've seen us live for God. And thank God. Somebody asked me one time, said, how did you have such three great children? I said, it wasn't anything I'd done. Because I failed God so many times. But I always was able to say, God, I'm sorry. I repent. And I watched all my children receive the Holy Ghost at about 12 years old. Right? They gave their life to Christ. Two boys in the ministry, I, I couldn't be prouder than I am today. Anything I did, no. They made their mind that they wanted to serve God. They gave their heart to God. And they kept the strong man strong in their lives. <coughs> Let me leave you with this as I close. things that you do as a Christian in your everyday lives it's going to become I don't want to say a habit but it will to a point become a habit you should have good habits in your lives Amen. Amen. if coming to the house of God is a habit I'm glad I accumulate that habit Amen Amen the reading my Bible and praying every day and repeating every day is a habit. I'm, I'm glad I got that habit. Amen? I believe it was Paul said, keep the things that are pure, strong. Maybe he didn't say it just quite like that. But he said the things that are important in your spiritual life, keep them strong. Keep them renewed. Hello? <coughs> because these are the things that's going to cause us to be great in the kingdom of God. Every one of you are going to be a strong person in some situation. I don't know what. For the kingdom of God. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Amen? Let's stand. I want to leave you this. Not only is the strong man the Holy Ghost in our lives, but sin is a strong man in other people's lives that don't know Christ. Sin has a bound. Some have no control. Hello? Yeah. Sin controls them. Flesh controls them. Amen? The only thing that will ever bind that strong man in an unbeliever's life is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And when he hears the Word of God, the Word of God convicted him and him applying that to his life and being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost comes in, it sweeps out the house. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Of all sin, all iniquity. Hallelujah. Are you thinking today? 
Are you thanking God today? The Holy Ghost is a strong man in my life. I'm going to keep the Holy Ghost, the strong man in my life. Because when it's strong, I'm affecting others. Amen. I'm an example to others how they can live free from sin. Free from the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him today, church. Can we? Let's just lift up our hands and let's worship. Praise Him today. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, we love you today. We love you today.
Thank <laughs> you.